What's up, what's up? I have an iPhone 6 here with came in for no touch and the volume buttons don't work. And, um, gosh, <laughs> we've done so many touch IC repairs that we just, we just do the touch IC repair first, you know. And, uh, a lot of times I don't even look at the screw holes or anything like that. I think in, the, in, in this instance I did look at the screw holes and I did, I don't know if I measured diode mode on the B sync line or not. And when I say B sync line, B sync line is is M1 basically, and uh, M1 leads to the tenth pin on the LCD connector, which is LCM to AP to HIFA B sync con. Okay, that's that's the culprit for touch IC disease. So I, I just call this the B sync line, and um, if you measure this uh, if you measure this um, this pin in diode mode with uh with with everything dis with the battery disconnected then you should get a reading right around 0 0.45 0 0.46 right around there okay it's a good reading and i'm pretty sure i measured it and i'm pretty sure it was good so i just went ahead and and um replaced mason so replacing mason i didn't see any corrosion under m1 so i was like all right i don't know if this is going to fix it or not so replaced it touch touch still didn't work so i was like ah, man bad mason so I replaced it again, and uh, still no touch. And then I was like, all right, let's just give Cumulus a try. Replace Cumulus, still no good. And in that process, I think I overheated the backlight IC, so I had ended up replacing the backlight IC. Uh, so after that point, I was like, man, what the hell is going on here? And uh, so, I was, so immediately I suspected chestnut. Okay, so chestnut, there's a few lines under here that can cause no touch, which is PP5E7 Sage. PN five E seven Sage and um, and uh, so I measured diode mode, you know, on the back side here, and basically it's the first cap and the fourth cap, and they they tested fine, and then there's also a five V one line right here uh, that can also cause lack of touch, right? Which is the corner one right here, and and oftentimes what you'll see in the six and six plus is that you know similar to the M one on Mason you'll see some corrosion under here, okay? So instead of lifting chestnut, I was like, all right, let's just measure some voltages. And, uh, you know, at this point, I'm probably about three hours into this repair. <laughs> uh, yeah, still happens to me. Um, so I, I stuck a flex cable on it, measured some voltages, and sure enough, I was getting 5.1, 5E7, 5E7 here. So I was like, all right, it's not chestnut, man. Definitely not chestnut because uh, chestnut is doing its job. So here I am. Um stuck and and uh so I was like you know what it's got to be long screw damage it has to be so all right so let's take a look at let's take a look at the screw hole here okay um so yeah it's pretty bad okay and and here's the thing when i when i initially tested i you know i normally just test for ap to lcm reset and uh, and i check for um uh lcm enable you know those are those are the two that generally speaking they get they get uh you know you you'll get a black display but in th in this instance the screen was actually working fine Are we recording now? Maybe. I don't know what happened here, but anyways. So the screen is actually working fine, so that's why that's nothing why I didn't suspect wall screw damage. <laughs> and uh and then so I finally went back to check continuity. Um so I finally went back to checking continuity, okay. So there's actually a, a test point here for the, the B sync line and uh, you can check for continuity between here and here, okay. And I checked for continuity and there was definitely continuity, no problems, okay. Uh but what was weird was that I, I had measured diode mode one more time and, and sure enough I was getting point five seven. So that told me that we got some issues. Um we got some issues, yeah. And the fact that I was getting 0.57, I, d I still don't know the exact reasoning for that because um, obviously, you know, there's there's two points here that can cause a drop in voltage, which is the CPU, this dot right here, and then Mason, this dot right here. Okay, so that that gives you your your drop in voltage for the for the 
die with it. Um, so let's just all right. So I've already backed this thing up, and we're good to go here in terms of data. So I don't think I'm going to fix this phone because Wi-Fi doesn't work, and uh, and I think he said the volume buttons didn't work. All right, so I'm going to disconnect it real quick. And I'll show you guys a little bit of <laughs> the long screw damage. What long screw damage really does here. All right, you see that little crack right there? I don't know if you can see that or not, but can you guys see that right there? You see how that's lifting up? Yeah. Okay. So that's what long screen damage does. It's not, you know, it's 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 multi-faceted, uh, I guess. Um, basically, the screw screw goes down the hole and it lifts this whole this whole uh, bolt up. Nut, yeah, whatever. Nut lifts the whole nut up, and then it it lifts this entire cheap uh, logic board material up, and it destroys the traces below it. Okay, so somewhere along the line here, this B sync point connects to somewhere I don't know exactly where because you you suspect that this probably goes to the CPU and then this goes there's a trace that goes under here that goes there and then somehow this point also links to the to the backside um uh u u2403 right here okay to this point right here somehow so i imagine probably maybe you know this point right here is directly correlated to this here through some through the multi-layer logic board okay so <laughs> so the cheap fix is this. Um, cheap fix is this. I just use my fingernail and I just push down on it because uh, here's here's the deal. Okay, this is this is my donor board which I've scraped off. Okay, um, I don't know exactly where the damn trace is. It, it might even be on the top layer here. Actually, I, I haven't really scraped down that far yet. But this is the point right here, and I've already lost it lost my uh, connection already so it, it may be on the top layer which is also where I think I think maybe the third layer is where the Wi-Fi um, traces are alright so so here's the deal okay you see this dot right here this dot <clears throat> actually goes down to into one of the layers of the logic board here and then connects to somewhere else okay so basically if you sever this point right here then you're going to lose connection to this dot okay but this dot is very important because um, there there are instances where there's something else connecting to the other side of this dot okay um, I don't think it's I don't think I have an example here okay but generally speaking this trace goes somewhere and then you know if you see another prong coming out of this and this will go to another chip. Okay, so so if this dot is missing, and then you try to connect from you know this this trace to this trace, it's not going to work because you you really need this dot here, um, because uh, it's going to connect somewhere deep in the in the in the logic board in one of the layers of the logic board. I don't know if that makes sense or not, but th this is why you're going to get Sometimes you'll get diode mode readings, right? And uh, and you're still going to get a diode mode reading, um, even if the trace is broken. So that's the reason, is that you know there's still a connection to another chip on the, on the logic board. I don't know if that makes sense. So uh, so what, what am I getting at here? Um, what am I getting at here? Well. I guess my question is, why am I getting 0.57 in diode mode when when I don't push down on this thing? Okay, when I do push down on it, okay, I'll, I'll just measure it right here, okay? And it may measure good right now. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to measure diode mode at this point right here. So now I'm getting 0.52, okay? 0.545, all right? So that's not right. It should be 0.46 or so. Now I'm going to push down on this little uh, nut right here. And as I push down, I get 0.463, okay? Which means that that dot right there is disconnecting somehow. That that dot is disconnecting. 
uh, to to what I don't exactly know, um, and that and that's where my quandary is, you know, because otherwise what I could do is probably just run a jumper, you know. And and here's the thing, okay. So let me measure diode mode on this this side right here. So I'm getting point four. Point four six seven, which is which is correct. That's what I'm supposed to be getting. All right. Point four six seven. Okay, that's that's what I'm supposed to get. So that that side is fine. It's just that something is missing on this side, um, connecting um, something is missing on this side, and uh, and I don't know exactly what. Because here's the deal: when I remove Mason, I, I still get 0.467 um, at this point right here, which means that the voltage, the diode mode voltage drop, is not has nothing to do with Mason. Um, it is most likely in the CPU. But if I'm getting if I'm getting a connection from here to the CPU, I guess there could be a voltage drop here as well. I guess that might make sense. But I have also I, I'm pretty sure I've also tested. I think I tried. Which one was it? I think I did diode mode with one. Here you go. Here's one right here. Okay. So this one has no Mason, no U2403. Okay. And and I measure diode mode at this point, and I still get 0.468. So my guess is that 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 has everything to do with the CP, the voltage drop. At that dot at the CPU. Um, so the question is, where am I getting 0.57? Uh, maybe 0.57 is Jess Mason. Maybe. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to walk through this how to how to fix this without actually repairing the the trace on the long street damage here. Um, so let's think about this. Let's think about this. Okay. So maybe, what's up, man? So maybe what I'm missing is. So let's see. So okay. So this connects to. Let's see. So maybe I need to run a trace from here to under the chip. I think maybe that's the only solution. That might be the only solution. I think. If I don't want to do anything further. But uh, anyways, I've already gotten data off this thing, so I think that's I think I'm just gonna call it a day. But just for trial and error, I think that's what I could probably do in the future. Um, you know, if pushing down on this thing doesn't work, you know, which does work temporarily, sometimes. So, so yeah, so I think, so I think maybe the solution is to try to. To, to run it from maybe this point because there's definitely continuity from here to here so I think the solution is to run it from here to under the chip running it from here to the to this line is not going to work because yeah, that's not going to work alright uh, we'll have to test that there another time alright so I thought of one more thing that I can try and and that is to measure Okay, so M1 is going to be up here. Okay, so I'm going to do diode mode on the chip itself and see what I get in diode mode. And that's going to going to give me an idea of what I should be getting if I'm just getting continuity to to this chip right here. Okay, so this is giving me point. Uh, hold on a second. Point five zero one. All right. So that gives me. So it still doesn't really really make sense to me <laughs> while I'm getting point five four. Um, on this thing, because uh, let's see. All right, so all right, let's look at the schematics. Let's get back to the schematics. So we got a dot here. Okay, this is the V-sync line. All right, connector right there it goes from the connector to the filter, and it goes. You know what? You got one dot at the CPU. You got one dot. Under Mason, all right, and those are generally your only voltage drops. I guess I'm not sure if there's a voltage drop across this or not, but you know what? Let's check it real quick. 
I mean, since we're uh, since we're doing this, we must as well just go all out. Figure this thing out, man. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take U2403 out. This is a donor board of mine. We're going to figure this sucker out. And then I think we're going to have to stop playing around today and get some work done. This is a pretty beat up U2403, but I think it'll work. Okay, so let's just make sure that we know which side is, is the M1, which is that side. Okay, so uh, let's see. Which one is ground anyways? Let's, let's make sure we know what we're measuring before we measure it. So, okay, so right next to it is ground. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to measure diode mode um, from this point and the one on this so basically this and that okay see if there's a voltage drop so red side on ground oh okay so this is there there is actually a voltage drop across this oh this is 0 0.50 as well hmm interesting 0 0.504 and 0 0.50 so this is about the same as Mason is. So let's see if we get anything now. 0.446. Okay. So this goes looks like it goes directly to the CPU. So it still doesn't explain why we're getting 0.454. Um, yeah, I'm still at a loss here. I'm still at a loss, man. This is our real one, and I mean, this is the one we're working on. And when I, I mean, I guess it could be shorted, but I don't, I think, I don't think that's likely, man. See, I'm getting 0.544 when I measure this this test point right here in diode mode, without pushing down on the on the on the nut. I mean, I just don't get it. Maybe the aggregate of both U2403 and Mason, maybe? Do we have one where we just have Mason off? But that's connected to the CPU, so... Hmm. Uh, we'll have to save this uh, finale for another day here. Uh, I still think maybe... I still think it's worth a shot to, you know, if you really want to get this thing to work, you know, pushing down on this, this, this doesn't fix the touch, or, you know, temporarily at least, so you can get data off. Maybe run a jumper from here to, well, hmm, to Mason, I would say. I guess another thing we could try also is just measure continuity from U2403 to this. You know what, touch is not working now anyways, well, hmm, do I really want to, I've already taken Mason off five times already. I don't know if I want to do it one more time or not, but that'll answer some questions if I do do it. Uh, this is going to bug me, so I think I got to do it. That sucks. That really sucks, man. Right. For the sixth time. This is a uh, research and development.
Okay, so what we're going to do now is check for continuity. You know what, let's do diode mode first. It should be probably about the same. But, uh... 0.424, but, you know, it's kind of hot, so, you know what, let's check for continuity now. Continuity is not going to change. So let's go from... Let's go from here to M1. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but let's go from here to M1 and see what happens. I think that's it, man. I think we found our problem. There it is. That's our problem, man. All right. Found us, Angie. So when you have long screw damage down there, it actually breaks the trace uh, from from uh, from this point to, to M1 under Mason. So in order, if you don't want to fix, I don't think it's possible to fix the long screw damage. I don't think it's possible to fix the long screw damage in the screw hole to fix the touch, okay? But I think what you can do is run a jumper from there to under Mason. Does that make sense? You can do that too. Connector to Mason, yeah. Under, it's got to be under Mason though. You can't run a jumper to. Uh, yeah, M1. Yes. So when it lifts up, it actually breaks the connection directly to Mason. So. Wi Fi. Wi Fi, we can probably fix Wi Fi, yeah. You know, it's just. It's three traces that. It's like, I think in the third layer. You just have to scrape down to the third layer and fix those three traces, but who knows where it's actually broken? You know, who knows where those traces are actually broken because the nut, the nut lifted up. You know, so the, the trace could be broken further out somewhere. You know, so I don't think it's a repair. I don't think we can repair it. But if you want to fix the touch forward so that they can do a backup when they get get it back, then the solution is to run the trace under Mason. To the other side. Yeah, yeah, that's the only way. Yeah, but I think the test point is probably easiest. You know, test point is just sitting there. You know, so you know what? Let's just do it in this video. We'll, we'll do it in this video, okay? We must as well just do it, man. Um. So how are we gonna do this? Uh, let's see. Because M1 is just a dot. So, okay, let's just do it. Uh, I mean, we know what we have to do. So, so basically, I'm going to run a jumper under here and uh, hopefully not have it jack up while I'm doing it. You know what? Uh, do I need to... Do I even need to re-ball, you think? <laughs> uh, I, I might not even need to re-ball, man. Let me see. Let me see what this looks like. Now I forgot which chip I was using. I don't think I need to reball actually. I think I can probably just go with this. All right, so let's just reheat. I mean, they should be fairly even. And then the one that I touch is NC, I believe. So yeah, those are both NC, so we're good to go. So you know what? Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna try. Hopefully, uh, yeah, it should work. Whatever. Maybe. I mean that that ball's dead anyway, so let's just uh Okay. Uh man, I don't know why I'm spending so much time on this, but I guess maybe it'll be worth something later. <laughs> okay.
So I think maybe, should I put some green stuff on it? Let's see, what should I do here, man? Because I don't want this thing to break off, you know? Maybe it'll be okay. Let's just give it a try, I guess, and see what happens. What's the worst that can happen, man? Uh, I should probably put some flux under here first. Uh, that may not be enough flux. No, I'm kidding. I don't even have this right way. Well, let's hope this works, man. So I don't really want to reball this again. I'm a little lazy. Because I've spent so much time on this already. Slow melt. Let's melt it slowly and have a nice little no problems. Slow melt, man. There you go. All right. I guess we can, what we can do is just probably, you know, we can test to see if this is connected by just uh, measuring the end of this in diode mode to ground. So let me put some green stuff on it before I lose. I really just want to make sure it holds tight. Although, if it's not in properly, then I'm going to be screwed. Yeah, we'll put some green stuff on it for now, just to make it hold. It's definitely spending a ridiculous amount of time on this. I'll stick it over there just in case. All right. Hold tight. All right, that yeah, should be good enough. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna just gonna jump this sucker all the way across here to this test point, and I really hope it works. I really hope it works. Um, so we're just gonna run into this test point. I'll leave a little bit of slack, maybe. Yeah. Okay, because that is going to be the easiest. So I think, okay, so can you see it? Yeah, okay. My tips are not, my tweezers are not totally... Uh, it's got, that's driving me nuts, so it's got to be driving you guys nuts, too. Dang it. Oh. 
<laughs> All right, let me get my other tweezers. Maybe that'll work better. It'll drive me crazy. All right, now let's measure diode mode, and uh, hopefully we get something point a little more respectable. Hopefully. Uh, that's not good, man. 0.53. That which means that it's not working. All right, let's see what we get from here to ground. Point five four. Hmm. That's not good. Point five four. Why am I getting point five four? Interesting. Pretty sure. That's weird, man. Now I'm really just stumped. I don't get it. Just don't get it, man. Point four six when I push down and point five four when I don't push down. So I'm still missing something. <sighs> the hell am I missing, man? Let's see if it let's see what let's see if it boots up. Suspect it will. Okay, so touch still does not work. Uh man. That's not good. Uh I think I'm I think I'm gonna call this a day. Hmm. Where else could it be connected to, man? It just doesn't make sense. No, not yet.
You think so? But I don't even know where that line is. That's the problem. I don't know where the line is. I've scraped away and I don't know where the line is. Yeah. I think the line might be under under one of the connectors or something like that, you know. Yeah. It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be because diode mode is different from the connector to the U2403. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't know where the line is under there. I, there's a dot there. That's, that's the only thing that's there is a dot. The test point. But if you scrape under the test point, I don't, I think it goes to maybe the fourth layer. Because I've scraped down to the third layer, which is where the Wi-Fi is. So it, maybe it's under there. Maybe. You know? All I know is that when I push down on this, oops, sorry. Uh, I know there's pictures on here. Um, okay, so if I push down on this, sometimes, there it goes. See that? It works. What's, uh, let's see. See, it works, man. <laughs> the touch works. You block the. Alright, anyways, the touch works if I push down on a dot, and I, I think that's it, man. I, I don't, I really want to figure out the touch problem, you know, because I don't think pushing down on this little dot, pushing down on this nut right here is always going to work. That's my problem, you know. I mean, it works in this instance right here, but I don't think it's always going to work, you know. So for later on, right, if it doesn't work, then what do we do? It doesn't make sense, man. It doesn't make sense. I, I don't know. It's It might be shorted with something. Maybe that's the ultimate. I could just clamp it, maybe. You know, just... <laughs> I mean, I've already probably put five hours into this thing already. The Wi-Fi's out, which is why it's doing this. Now I think I just have a bad Mason uh, placement, which is why you get these lines under here. <sighs> Anyways, all right, let's let's call this a day here, uh, unless I can think of something else, but I don't know at this point, so.